Welcome back to the second episode of my New Mexico State Dynasty mode on NCAA Football 14, where Coach John Ham's Aggies are 1-2 and two and looking to get back in the fight. Also, thanks to you all for the success of the first video. The pilot episode did so well that I had advertisers everywhere dying to get a piece of this series. But don't worry, they'll all be integrated very tastefully. So without further ado, let's get back to the action. It's week four, and we're taking on the UCLA Bruins at the Rose Bowl, which, believe it or not, is where they play the Capital One Rose Bowl every year. Wow, you learn something new every day. Capital One, what's in your wallet? The defense gets off to a promising start, forcing a UCLA three and out on their first possession of the game. The Aggie offense gets off to a solid start with a Bobby Mullins run, and Kyle Miller manages to hold on to the ball despite being blasted into the fifth dimension. Despite not knowing where he is or what day it is, Miller snags another ball, but our drive ends on third and 10. But if you want a drive that will never end, go to your Tesla dealership today. The lithium ion batteries are long lasting and your car definitely won't drive itself into a bus full of orphans. The Aggies draw first blood with a field goal, but UCLA running back Ronald Toth weaves his way through our defense, going 39 yards untouched all the way to the end zone. On the Bruins' next possession, Antonio Caldwell eats up some yak for a 52-yard gainer, and Toth pinballs off a defender for his second touchdown of the first quarter. Justin McCall hits Kenny Harris and Daryl the Hog Johnson for back-to-back -back first downs, but McCall's third pass floats for too long and gets picked off by a Bruin corner. UCLA exploits the middle of the field for a 31-yard catch and run by wide receiver Keith Cook, and the Toth Ferry leaves another touchdown under our pillow, already his third of the first quarter. We're now onto the second quarter, and we're mounting a pretty promising drive, but it ends short of the end zone when McCall is baited into throwing his second pick of the game. We almost grab a pick of our own, but cornerback Todd Swain clearly forgot to stick him. Shout out to Jerry Rice. We need points before half, and we need them bad, so McCall mounts a heroic drive, finally capping it off in the end zone with a bullet to Kyle Green. And if you need real bullets, call Raytheon Technology. Raytheon, we'll fucking kill the competition. Unfortunately, our competition is looking pretty stiff, and Rutledge sneaks in one more touchdown before half to Keith Cook, who's certainly cooking our secondary. <laughs> Justin McCall still has time for one more pick before half, achieving the rare first half Gannon, never before seen. UCLA tacks on a field goal in the second half, but we get a nice spark on offense, running a perfectly executed speed option. Unfortunately, a promising drive stalls when, you guessed it, McCall gets picked off in the red zone. For those keeping score at home, that's a Gannon plus one. Things get a little more respectable in the fourth quarter when Bobby Mullins cashes in with a 13-yard touchdown run, but Toth finds a cavity in our defense for one more Bruin touchdown. Before this game is mercifully over, McCall squeezes in one more pick, but he won't be able to complete the ultra-rare double Gannon as UCLA hangs onto the ball and cruises to victory. And if you want to cruise to victory, try Carnival Cruises. I swear to God we don't know what happened to Natalie Wood. The Aggies have fallen to 1-3, and, and our next game is at home against San Diego State. I'm going to use some reverence here and not make any jokes about any certain punters, because that's too fucked up, even for this channel. As a side note, I almost attended San Diego State, but my high school counselor talked me out of it, saying I wouldn't like how big their campus was. It doesn't really make sense now in hindsight, but it's okay, because now I get to root for Nevada's 2-10 and 10 football team every year. Coach John Hamm has the troops riled up, and although the crowd is sparse at best, we're going to show the Aztecs what New Mexico State football is all about, and he's gone. Victor Ramsey goes 58 yards to the crib for the Aztecs, and after the Toth Ferry nightmares from last week, it's apparent we might need to beef up our run defense and recruiting this year. We get the ball back, and Bobby Mullins gets us off to a nice start with a 12-yard run before Kyle Green gets open on a hook route for another first down. Justin McCall reads the defensive end perfectly on the read option, and we're starting to pick up some real momentum on offense. We go back to the well for eight more yards with Mullins, and then McCall hits Kyle Green on a crossing route as we penetrate the red zone. A great drive has a tough end as fullback Travis Hill gets stuffed on third down, and we settle for a field goal. The Aztecs come back and hit CJ Christmas Carroll before Victor Ramsey goes dashing through our defense on a one horse open sleigh, scoring his second touchdown of the first half. We need to respond with seven, not three, and McCall answers with a nice looking drive through the air, dotting up receivers, and finally bursting through the San Diego State defense on a perfectly timed bubble scream to big time Bobby Mullins. In a touching tribute to the Green Bay Packers, 
our special teams follows up a missed extra point with some truly awful kick coverage, and our defense continues to get shredded on the ground, allowing yet another touchdown run by the Aztecs. This time it's an end around to wide receiver Jeffrey Kraft, and I'm truly embarrassed to allow a touchdown to a guy who spells Jeffrey with a G. Gross. SDSU tacks on another touchdown when Victor Chef Gordon Ramsey cooks our defense for his third score of the game, but we get a desperately needed spark on the ensuing kick return by backup running back Connor Jones. With the clock running down in the first half, McCall takes a brutal sack and we can only muster a field goal that makes it a 16 point game at intermission. To start the third quarter, Heisman hopeful Travis Hill bulldozes his way to a first down, but Justin McCall gets too greedy and is picked off which eventually leads to the second touchdown of the day for Jeffrey Kraft. We get the ball back and cut back into the lead with another expertly timed screen call from coach John Hamm that leads to a Bobby Mullins touchdown, but there's no escaping Victor Ramsey, who sets up a short touchdown pass for the Aztecs and are managing to quash any chance of a New Mexico State comeback. I try to score with our most reliable weapon at the goal line, but Travis Hill is stonewalled and McCall follows it up with yet another pick, which effectively shuts the door on this game. The Aggies fall to 1-4 and four on the season, and Victor Ramsey racks up a very modest 279 yards and three touchdowns. Anonymous donor Christine Aguilera has given me a bit of an ultimatum. I need to win our next game, or she'll cut our funding for the rest of the season. With that in mind, the next game is obviously a big one. We're taking on our in-state rivals, the New Mexico Lobos. It's a gloomy, rainy day in Albuquerque, as if God himself is shedding tears over this mess that we currently call a football team. But the Aggies set the tone early, converting a fourth and one inside our own territory. The Hog finds a soft spot in the middle of the D, and Mullins bounces off left tackle for 12. It's time to take a shot, and McCall zings a ball in between the safeties to Kenny Harris, who runs free for a huge 39-yard touchdown. It's a much-needed confidence boost for Justin McCall, whose girlfriend left him for Travis Hill just last week. New Mexico gets the ball, and our deficiencies as a run defense show up very briefly, but a third down strip sack stops the Lobos in their tracks. The Hog gets open for a pickup of 15, and McCall checks down to Connor Jones, converting on third and six. We move the chains on back-to-back -back fourth downs, both times with passes to Bobby Mullins, and we find the end zone once again when McCall boots to his right and finds Kyle Miller for a tutty, giving us our first two touchdown lead of the season. New Mexico has a dual threat at quarterback, and he starts converting third downs with both his feet and his arm, putting pressure on our shaky defense. Eventually, though, we stiffen in the red zone, and the Lobos get on the board with a field goal. McCall has time to orchestrate a two-minute drill before half, and he starts to move the ball with some pinpoint passes, but the Aggies are finally turned away on third and long, sending us to intermission with an 11-point advantage. The Lobos start the second half exploiting our aggressive defensive ends with a read option, followed by a dive right up the middle for a first down, but on third and short, David McCutcheon penetrates the backfield and blows up a New Mexico run. Bobby Mullins finds some daylight, picking up 14 yards at the left side, and McCall finds the hog in a tight window for 18 more. We press our luck on 4th and 9, but scout team wide receiver Clint Poole ends up on the shallow end of the first down marker. New Mexico gets the ball and starts to drive, with Robinson meandering for 26 yards down the right sideline, but faced with 3rd and 4, he loses his balance and coughs up the football. It's nearly a scoop and score, but Sanders lacks the return skills of Dion, and we end up settling for a huge takeaway. We decide to keep our foot on the gas and go for it on 4th and 1, and we hit New Mexico with a little bit of their own medicine on a read option. McCall can read a defensive end, but I'm still not sure he can read a coverage because his end zone fade gets nabbed in the end zone for a pick. Ultimately though, it's no harm no foul because we jar a pass loose on 4th and 2, ending the Lobo threat on the other side of the field. It's time to put this game away, and McCall shows immaculate touch on what ends up being a 71-yard catch and run for Kenny Harris, easily our longest play of the season. I'm making sure we're not throwing any red zone interceptions this time, 
so Justin McCall's his own number to stretch the lead to 18 points on a bootleg. We get the ball back and decide to flex on our rivals a little bit, gashing them up the middle with Bobby Mullins before Justin McCall shows that the quickest way to the end zone is a straight line. It's his second TD run of the game and fourth in total. After a tough few weeks, our junior quarterback bounces back and earns a well-deserved player of the game award. More importantly, we notch our second win of the season and Christine Aguilera has assured me, anonymously of course, that she'll keep cutting checks for our football team. I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video, and I'd like to encourage you to check out my brand new second channel. It's called Built to Will, and I'll be doing movie reviews and other fun stuff over there.